Without anything we came in, just the parts of our body. Then as we grew older, the blessings of Allah continued upon us. First we were under the being looked after by our parents. So they used to help us um, live a life, mashallah, those that have parents. And when somebody starts earning, then the mistake that we make is that we think that the wealth that we have belongs to us. When in reality it doesn't belong to us, it belongs to Allah. Because we came in this world with nothing. The day we're going to die, we'll die with nothing. <coughs> um, uh, how many people take the wealth with them? Or does anybody take the wealth with them into the grave? Nobody. No matter how rich the person may be, no matter how much gold he will have, no matter how much property he will have, when he will go into his grave, completely empty. So came in with nothing, will go out with nothing. So the wealth that Allah has given us in between, whatever amount it may be, some people they have, Allah has opened it up for them, some people they have, Alhamdulillah, this is a, um, a sign of Allah. Allah has given an abundance of wealth to some people, and Allah has given keep the wealth of some people limited. So, so how the wealth that Allah has given us in between doesn't belong to us. It belongs to Allah. It is a, it is a trust from Allah. It is an amanah from Allah. So the minute a person leaves the world, now he has no say in the wealth because it didn't belong to him. The wealth did not belong to him. It was belong. It belonged to Allah. Allah just gave it to him as a amana, as a trust. Now, the minute he dies, the minute he's about to die, the soul is coming out. Now he has no say in the wealth. Now Allah will decide how it's going to be distributed. So, it is very important whether we're living in a Muslim country, whether we're living in a non-Muslim country. Whether, and alhamdulillah, we are living in a country where the teachings of Islam are respected. Okay, Muslims will not be respected because Muslims have not remained how Muslims should be, should be living. That is our weakness. And we need to change our lifestyle. Otherwise, the teachings of Islam are respected in itself. So, when a person, first of all, the importance of making an Islamic will. The hadith which I just recited before you, the riwayah of Bukhari. Nabi Ali Salam says, any person has anything of value, anything valuable. He has a car, he has a house, he has a mobile, computer, anything, something valuable. Then he shouldn't even sleep two nights, he shouldn't even spend two nights, but he should have a will ready with him. Regardless of any age, as long as he's mature, whether he's married or not, whether he's working or not, he has anything valuable. And alhamdulillah, today, every teenager who's mature, he's got a phone, Many of them have already got a car. So it's very important. 90%, it was in the news, that 90% or even more of the Brits, people living in Britain, don't even have a will. Whether Muslims or non-Muslims, don't even have a will. Why? Now they were mentioning the reasons why they don't have a will. They said that when a person is told that you need to make a will, then you, you're putting him off life. You, you're trying to put him off of this life. You're trying to tell him you're going to die. 
So he doesn't want that thought to come in his mind. You know, if you tell somebody, you have your will ready. So he'll get offended. He said, You waited for me to die. That's why you're asking me. It's not about anybody waiting for you to die or not. It's something about Islam. Something the Rabbi of Allah has told us to do. But person, personally, no matter how old, as soon as a person becomes, you know, I always tell people, as soon as you hit 60, you should have your, every person should have it ready. But that's the deadline. 60 is the deadline. By 60, you should have up-to-date will ready. Because the Nabi of Allah said, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مَا بَيْنَ إِلَى سَبْعِينَ The average lifespan, the average age in which my ummah normally dies is between 60 and 70. Any person who's gone beyond 70, now he's living on bonus. Anytime he could be the end of him. Well, I, no, you're not saying that you will live until 60 or 70. You know, we can die any minute. Anybody, even young, can die, old can die. But deadline. Now, people are 80, 90, and you tell them, you have Islamic will ready? Did they get offended? We shouldn't be getting offended. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said that as soon as I heard this hadith from the lips of the Nabi of Allah, now this is what you call, what you listen to, you obey. As soon as I heard this hadith from the Nabi of Allah, never mind two nights, I didn't even spend one night, but I had an up-to-date will ready with me. So, that's the first thing we need to do. Fill in an Islamic will form. And that Islamic will form, if we have it ready, we've signed it. We've got two witnesses who've signed it as well. Two witnesses, maybe our brother, our son, anybody. Any, uh, maybe somebody, our neighbor or somebody, they've signed it. Two witnesses. Now that will will be respected by the state, the, 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 the country we're living in. Alhamdulillah, may Allah um, uh, give them iman. They respect the teachings of Islam. They respect the will form. It's our weakness that we don't even fill it in. It's our weakness that we don't even make it. So as soon as the person dies, otherwise if a, if a person dies without an Islamic will, without an Islamic will, he dies without a will. No, so many people are dying without a will altogether. Because of which, more than nearly all the wealth, or 40-50% of the wealth, goes, ends up in the state, ends up by the government. Now, Islamically, that does not, should not be happening. Islamically, a person, as soon as he dies, that his wealth should be distributed the way Allah wants it to be distributed. And Allah has mentioned it in the Quran. This is how, so as soon as a person dies, the first thing, he only has a say before his death, in one third. If in his life he wants to distribute his wealth, he wants to get it off his, off his mind, if he wants to get it off his, uh, out of the way, then that is no problem. He'll have to give equal to all his children. Whether his uh, um, uh, daughter, son, whoever it is, he'll have to give it equal. There will be time for question, inshallah. So, he will have to give it equal. But if he doesn't want to divide it, he doesn't want to distribute it while he's living, and he wants to keep it until after, afterwards, then he'll only have a say in one third. The rest two thirds will go towards the, the family. So as soon as a person dies, the first thing that will be, that from his wealth will be taken will be his debt. If he's died without, without paying his debt off, if he's died with owing people money. Something very important, very, very serious thing. Today we borrow people, people's money and we, we, we just hang on to it and we just delay the payment. On one side, Nabi Ali Salam said, Man akhada amwal al nas, the person who takes wealth from people with the intention that he will pay them back, Allah will help them pay, pay him back. Allah, Allah's help is with him to pay the wealth back to, to, the, to whoever he's taken the money from. On the other hand, 
وَمَنْ أَخَذَ يُرِيدُ إِتْلَافَهَا If a person takes wealth from people with the hope or with the intention of not paying it back, oh, he's wealthy anyway, he's rich. Whether I pay him or I don't pay him, it doesn't make a difference to him. It's not about whether it does make a difference, it's his wealth. Well, Allah has given it to him. If he's gifted it to you, that's another thing. But you've borrowed it of him, now you need to pay him back. So if a, just imagine a person has become shaheed. A person has become shaheed. يُبْعَثُ كُلُّ عَبْدٍ يُغْفَرُ لِلشَّهِيدِ كُلُّ ذَنْبٍ إِلَّا الدَّيْنِ a person, he gets martyred, he gets shaheed in the path of Allah. He goes out in the path of Allah, he gets killed, he becomes shaheed. Such a great rank. Such a great rank. All his sins are forgiven. Before the first drop of blood is on the ground, he's completely clean. Except that, that he will still have to pay. Either you pay in this world or you pay in the akhirah. You've got no way out of it. Unless that other person, he's the... Uh, there was a time in the time of the Nabi of Allah when the Nabi of Allah, he used to be told to lead the Salatul Janaza, the Janaza Salah. Then he used to say, does this person have any debt? If he was told, yes, this person, he's, he's been, he borrowed money from this, this, so and so, and he still had to pay him back and he died without paying him back. Then Nabi Ali Salam used to say, you, you perform his Janaza, I'm not going to perform his Janaza. I'm not going to perform his janaza. He died without you paying his debt. I don't want to perform his janaza. Sallu ala sahibukum. You, you, you perform his janaza. So once this happened, that uh, the Nabi of Allah was about to lead the janaza and he asked, has anybody, does this person who just passed away owed anybody wealth, anybody money who he had borrowed off? So a few people, they said yes. He was borrowing off us. He was borrowing. He, he hasn't paid us back or whatever. So, Nabi Ali Salam said, I'm not going to lead the janaza, you lead the janaza. Ali radiallahu anhu stood up, he said, O Nabi of Allah, I take the responsibility of paying whoever this person has borrowed off. His debt is all on my name now. I will take the responsibility of paying all the debt off of this person. Nabi Ali Salam made dua. Just imagine, if a person Allah has given wealth, and the person who died, he wasn't well off, and he died without paying somebody well. Now, they should take a lesson from this. Now, Nabi Ali Salam said, May Allah save you, or may Allah relieve you from Jahannam, like the way you have relieved this dead person from death. فَكَّ اللَّهُ رِحَانَكَ مِنَ النَّاقِ كَمَا فَكَّكْتَ رِحَانَ أَخِي الْمُسْلِمِ May Allah relieve you. So this is also a great virtue that if a person is not well off and uh, he has been taking money for some reason, maybe um, uh, he had to pay the rent or he had to pay the, his house off or something. And in the process he died, in the process he passed away. So on the other hand, there is one person who Allah has given him, mashallah, abundance of wealth. He has got abundance of wealth. Then he... This is also a great way of saving ourselves from Jahannam. That we go and pay the debt off of this person. <clears throat> so, the first thing is whatever le wealth he has left behind should be used to pay his debt off as much as possible. Once his debt is cleared, then the second thing, funeral expenses. So, Ghusal, kafan, dafan, all these expenses. Nowadays, if a person dies in Medina, may Almighty Allah give all of us death, then there is everything is free. Everything from the government. MashaAllah, in any, so many people they die around, in and around Medina. After every salah, there is a janaza. And uh, everything is free. Kafan, dafan, everything is free. May Allah give it to us as well. So here, but here, there is a, this involved, th these people you have to pay, even the masjid you have to pay for ghusl. If you're not a member, then Allah maaf kare, you know, sometimes. Uh, well, I don't agree with it, um, uh, but uh, sometimes 
when a person, if he's a Muslim, he was living around the masjid, sometimes we should leave, let him off. You know, I've heard of cases in which just because he was not a member of the masjid, he, the masjid told him, we're not going to do ghusl of him here. This is, this is, I don't agree with this. This, this is, I don't understand that. If the masjid doesn't only cater for the members, then how can that be a house of Allah? The house of Allah should be able to cater. Okay, you can, you can tell them that, okay, you, you are not a member. We are doing this as a favor to you. This is part of our policy that we only do ghusl or we only give this facility to members. But out of your own courtesy, you can give some donation, some... That's problem, we'll do it for you, no problem. But to completely deny it, no, no, no place for you here, you go somewhere else. Now that is wrong. The masjid should be able to cater for these people. So maybe this, this may be come as a blow to some people, please forgive me. But um, uh, if this was a case, then this should be done that if a person was not a member, he was living around the masjid, he was performing salah in the masjid, he was not a member for some reason and he passed away. Everybody is going to die one day. Then the masjid should be able to cater for him. He should tell his family, look, this brother was not a member, but he was living around the masjid, mashallah, you know, he used to come for salah. So we'll, do, we'll give him the facility, we'll do everything for him. If the family can just give some contribution, some donation in the box or something, then alhamdulillah, no, nothing big deal in that. So, so the ghusl, the, the kafan, dafan, all this should be taken out from the wealth of the deceased. Then the third thing, if a person has made any wasiyah, any, any, he has uh, given his word that once I die, then give one third of my wealth. He's only allowed a say in the one third. The other two third, he has no say in. So only in one third, if he has said that give that one third to that person or give this one third to that madrasa, that masjid, that country, that poor people, whatever, then that should be done. Once these three things are out of the way, debt, his burial, everything cost, and his uh, one third, whatever he has uh, wished for. If these three things are out of the way, then the remaining two thirds, now that will be distributed how Allah wants it to be distributed. So Allah will say, يُسِيكُمُ Allah فِي أَوْلَادِكُمْ Allah is advising you in regards to your children. So if a person dies with leaving his children behind, لِذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِّ الْأُنْثَيَيْنِ For a male, for a boy, for a son, he will get double of a daughter. Now some people, they say, look, Islam is not being fair here. Why does the son get double of a daughter? Um, Islam is not giving equal rights to anybody. The girl is only, only the daughter is only getting half. And the son is getting double of the girl. How is this possible? But we need to understand that for a... Now, now let's start from the top. When Almighty Allah created Adam and Islam, and he made him enter into Jannah, then Almighty Allah told Adam and Islam that there will be four things in Jannah. How many things? Four things in Jannah. Now, we need to understand if uh, um, this, this is not a talk. This is more like a, trying to explain to you, it's more like a um, uh, lesson. So if you don't enjoy it, then uh, please forgive me, but I'm trying to explain. It's not like a storytelling or it's not like a talk. It's more like a um, lesson. So it's more of an understanding. So you'll have to use your brain and you'll have to be with me all the way through. So when Almighty Allah created Adam alayhi salam, he put him into Jannah with his wife. They told him, four things will happen in Jannah. You will never feel hungry in Jannah. There'll be so much food. There'll be so much fruit, so much sustenance around, in and around Jannah that you'll never feel hungry. You'll just be, when you will see a fruit, you say, let's be good for, for that fruit. Before you could go for it, the fruit will come to you. Wala ta'aga. And you will never be naked in Jannah. There will be plenty of clothes. Plenty of clothes in Jannah. And you will never feel thirsty in Jannah because there will be rivers flowing. 
You know, the Quran mentioned four rivers. Fiha anharum mimma in ghayri asin. Rivers of fresh spring water, mineral, you know, naturally, jannat water. Wa anharum min laban in lam yatagayya ta'mu'an. Rivers of milk. The, the smell hasn't changed, the taste hasn't changed. Completely fresh milk. Today our milk, you know, we leave it out for a few days and it's gone off. وَأَنْهَارٌ مِنْ لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ طَعْمُهُ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِنْ خَمْرٍ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ And rivers of wine, beer, wine. But this is not like the wine of this world that as soon as the person has a pint, he's out of the world. You know, he's not a human anymore, he acts worse than an animal. No, not one of those. Never mind, he drinks pints upon pints in Jannah. You know, he'll be, he'll be completely a proper... Jannati. So we should save ourselves from the, from even a sip or even a drop of wine in this world, and Allah will give us pints and pints of wine of Jannah, inshallah. No headache, no depression, nothing, no suicidal, nothing. Wine from Jannah. min asalim musaffa and wines of honey, clean, pure honey. Nowadays, you know, the bottle says pure honey, but 75-80% is just sugar. 75-80% is just sugar. So, when Almighty Allah created Adab al he told him, the third thing, that you never feel thirsty in Jannah, there'll be plenty of rivers flowing in and around Jannah. And the fourth thing, وَلَا تَضْحَى And you will never, you will never feel the sun in Jannah. Duha. You know, in the middle, Zohar time, you feel the sun. So sometimes in the hot country, um, uh, you feel very, very hot. You know, you feel the sun, you need to wear sunglasses. Sometimes you can't see in front of you because of the brightness of the sun. So, because in Jannah, there will be neither night, there will be neither day. In Jannah, the time or the part of the day, it will be not even night, it will be not even day, it will be the time of Fajr. The time of Fajr Salah. So you ask somebody, is the time of Fajr Salah day? They say, no, it's not day. Day is still going to come out. Is it night? So now, night is finished now. And the time of Fajr Salah, the time of Sadiq, is the most peaceful time in the entire 24 hours. It's the most peaceful time. And it is the most, it is such a time in which the least sins are being committed in the world. The least, all the clubs, pubs, may Allah save us, whatever it is. Um, uh, they'll be dancing, jumping, whatever, the whole night. But about the time of Subh Sadi comes and everything will be closed and they'll all be, they'll all be snoring. So, most peaceful time, the animals are doing the dhikr of Allah, the pious people are going to the masjid, the Fajr Salah taking place, some people in the Quran, some people making dua. The most peaceful time in the world. So Allah will give us. Because Jannah is a place of peace, isn't it? Salamun alaikum. Peace be on you. Tibtum. You know, a person, he'll go to Jannah, he'll be peace. So this is, Allah will give in Jannah this peaceful time. So there'll be no sun. Sun will not directly come to you. So you won't need sunglasses, you won't need... And it will not even be very cold. But when Adam alayhi salam made the mistake, whatever, it was written... From before that, whatever it was, so we cannot point fingers at anybody. So when he was sent back into this world, then Allah took these four things away from him. These four things were taken away from him. So now, if he feels hungry, he needs to work for it. He needs to go out, find a job, do something, you know, make some effort. If he needs clothes, he needs to go to the shop, buy some clothes or something, or buy some cloth, get it sewn or something. Then whatever he feels thirsty, he needs to get up on the top, or in other countries, get a bucket, put it into the well, and all these things, in order to get some water. So he needs to work for it. All those privileges which were in Jannah, is no longer with him. وَلَا تَضْحَى And now he will get the sunlight, he will feel hot, he will feel cold, all these things. The climate change. So he will go through all this. But a woman, 
This is only for man. This is only for male. For a female, he doesn't, she doesn't need to do anything. She doesn't need, if she's feeling hungry, she's feeling thirsty, then as long as she's in the care of her parents, her father will provide for her. Her father will provide for her. The father is not there, her brother, uncle, somebody will have to provide. She doesn't need to become independent and go out there and look for a job. This is not what Islam is saying. Whether that is allowed or not, we don't want to go into the detail. That is something, another issue, which will take a long time, but just trying to explain. So then, then once she gets married, as long as she comes to an age where she's ready to, for marriage, she gets married off, then her husband should provide nafqa, sukna, her shelter, her, some, a place for her to live in, her weekly or monthly, whatever it is, allowance, spending allowance, husband should be giving to her. The husband shouldn't think, oh, she's from a rich house, I don't need to give her. She should give me. No, no, no. The, some, some husband, you know, they, when they have a rich wife, they say, oh, I don't need to give her. She'll give me. No, no. Well, no matter how rich she is, that's her money. That's her money. You as a husband, Islamically, your duty is, you need to give her. If you don't give her, then you'll be asked about it on the day of Qiyamah. So, now the husband is providing. Now after a few years, the husband passes away or whatever, you know. Now the children, the, the son must provide. The mother is a jannah for the son. Now she, he, he should be providing. So in no way has Islam told the wife to take the responsibility of herself. No way. The father will provide, the brothers, husband, son, all these people have been told to look after. You know, the, the father is told that in hadith, Nabi alayhi salam said, Man ala jariyatain, the person who's got two daughters, and he looks after them, and he gives them good education, good looks after them in a good way until they come to a stage, then he finds a good partner for them, marries them off. The Nabi alayhi salam said, Jannah is for him. Now one sahab is to the Nabi of Allah, what about the person who's got one daughter? He said, okay, same thing for the person who's got one daughter. Then for a husband, he should be providing the same thing with a son. So no way has Islam given the responsibility to a female. So now that half of a male that she will get is all hers. It's all. She doesn't need to spend it on anybody. Now that male, if he's a husband, then he needs to look after his family. He needs to look after his children. He's got a big responsibility on him. If he's a brother, then he needs to look after his sisters, he needs to look after his mother. You know, if he's a son, he needs to look after his parents. So now that male has got some responsibility on him. But the female has got no responsibility Islamically. Okay, if she wants to become independent on her own, on her own accord, that, that's, that's something different. But Islamically, according to the teaching of the Quran, in no way has she been told to take on the responsibility. Others have been told to take look after her. She's the queen. She's the queen. No, the queen doesn't need to... She's the queen. She, she, everybody will be doing everything for her. So if... So, so if somebody looks at it from this way, then we should be saying the woman shouldn't be getting anything. But Islam, Islam is giving us such a thing that half should be giving to the queen as well. So... Islam has not only given rights to a woman, Islam has given heights to a woman. The person who's been given all the responsibilities, he'll get double. And the female who should, well, who has not got many responsibilities of uh, the income or anything, then she will get half. So Almighty Allah mentions that the male will get two or twice as much as the female. This is the thing of Islam. This is the thing which Allah has decreed or Allah has written. And this is something which we need to learn. In the hadith of uh, Tirmidhi, Nabi alayhi salam says, Ta'allamul fara'id wal Quran. Learn these inheritance rules 
learn the rules of inheritance, and learn Quran. Now in the same hadith, Nabi Ali Salam has mentioned inheritance rules, then Nabi Ali Salam has mentioned Quran. So the Quran has been mentioned second, and the inheritance rules are being mentioned first. Now I cannot explain to you all the inheritance rules, I'm just going to explain to you some of the ahadith. Then Nabi Ali Salam said, Another hadith, Nabi Ali Salam said, the person who dies, the person, one male, one Muslim male or female, he has worshipped Allah for 60 years. How many years? 60 asana. 60 years. فَيُضَاغَانِ فِي الْوَصِيَّةِ Then death comes, death will come to everybody, death comes unto him. And he hasn't made the Islamic will, or he hasn't, Fill the will form in. Alhamdulillah, the will forms are already there. We just have to fill it in. So he hasn't filled the form in. Because of which, whatever wealth he has in his bank, whatever wealth he's got on his name, will be distributed un-Islamically. So the share that should be given to the sons and daughters, some of it is now going to something else. The state or whatever, this tax, that tax. Then, for Yudharani, this, was, this happened because of him. If he had a will form ready with him, this wouldn't have happened. But the fact that he didn't have it ready, he's got no documents showing that he signed the form or anything. Now this is happening, the state will come in between. So what will happen now? Six years of ibadah on one side, he will end up in Jahannam. May Allah save us. So that six years of ibadah, because of not filling the form in because of not having the Islamic will ready or because of neglect from his own side, he will end up in Jahannam. On the other hand, another hadith Nabi Ali Salam said, Man mirathu The person who will deprive one of those who should be getting a share from his wealth. So if a person dies, and he has put everything on one of the son's name, and he has deprived the other son or the other daughters. Or somebody, he has put everything on the children's name, and he has deprived the wife. Or something. One of the, one of the people who should be getting a share from the wealth, he has deprived it. Nabi alayhi salam says, Qata Allahu mirathahu min al-jannah. Allah will deprive him from jannah. No jannah for him. No jannah for him. How? Who has given him the authority? To deprive somebody. You don't belong to Allah. How, how on earth or how, who has given him the authority to deprive somebody? So if he deprives somebody, if somebody is, one of the sons is not listening to him, then he says, <laughs> Make sure you don't give him anything after I die. He hasn't been a son to me. But Islamically, he should be getting something. Islamically, Allah has given him a portion. So if you have written that in a will, and that's what happens, and if that son doesn't get anything, maybe he won't say anything, but Allah will take the revenge. If he hasn't been a son to you, then Allah will take him that, why didn't you respect your father? Why didn't you look after your parents? Why didn't you listen to them? Allah will deal with him. But you should never deprive him of your, the inheritance he should be getting, Islamically. This happens many times. This happens many times in many families. Or oh, this, this daughter, or oh, my wife hasn't been a good wife to me, so... Uh, no, no. This doesn't work that way. If you want to give in your lifetime, you give everybody equal. And if you haven't given in your lifetime, then after you die, it will do as Allah has told us to do. So everything should be done the way Allah has told us to do. So, if a person dies leaving a wife who's got children, then she will get one eighth. One eighth of the, of the wealth that has been left, uh, left behind and then the others will be distributed among the children. But if a person dies with leaving a spouse who has no children, there were only the two of them, then she will get 
a quarter of the wealth, and according to the to the laws of inheritance, the others will go to the Baytul Mal. But today there's no Baytul Mal. Today there is no state um, uh, fund, Islamic state fund, Baytul Mal, which started off in the time of the of the Nabi of Allah. So, so what will happen today? The wife will get the full share. The wife will get the full share. All the three quarters because there's no Baytul Mal today. She will, she will get everything. Nowadays, um, uh, the wife wants half-half. 50%. May Allah give us the ability. So now, inshallah, we will, I, will explain, I will give you guys some of the forms that I have bought. And we will go through how to fill it in. If any person has any question, then inshallah we will take questions after that. So we'll just go through this book. For anybody listening on the internet, you can also find this will form. For those, this is mainly for those who are living in the UK. This this uh, form, you can find it on this website. www.oneethical.com Firstethical.com So you will find this form online as well, inshallah. So the form has already been made. We will just have to, we will just go through some of the notes. And then, so let's go to page number four. Sharia consideration. As per Surah An-Nisa, the main Sharia rules pertaining to distribution of assets upon death are as follows. Any outstanding debt owed by the deceased should be repaid. So that's the first thing. I've just mentioned this before. If a situation arises where the debt exceeds the assets left by the deceased, the family are not obliged to repay the shortfall. However, this full repayment should be strongly recommended so as to spare the deceased being held to account for these debts on the day of judgment. So they are trying to say here that if a person has left little bit of wealth, which is not enough to even pay his debt off, the first thing, that the wealth that is left behind should be paid to pay, to, should be used to pay the debt off. But if a person has got so less wealth that even his debt are not being paid off, then the family Islamically are not obliged to do it. They, they are not forced to do it, but they should be told or they should be motivated or persuaded that please, if you can all get together to pay at least the debt off of the person so he is not accountable on the day of Qiyamah and he is not held accountable for it. That's the first thing. All funeral expenses, number two, should be paid from the assets of the deceased. It is perfectly acceptable and often the case that the expenses are met voluntarily by one of or more of the family members. So sometimes the kafan, the fan, all these are sometimes given by some friend or family. Everything from my, my side. So that is okay. But if somebody is not ready, voluntarily ready to pay this off, then uh, that should be also taken from the wealth of the deceased, the person who has passed away. Now, number three, any wasiyah, bequest, bequest made by the deceased should be honored on condition that the value of this bequest do not exceed one third of the value of the remaining net assets left deducting whatever it is and also on condition that the recipient of the bequest is not an individual who is entitled under sharia to receive a share so that one third shouldn't be one of the people who will already be getting something so the son will be getting something the daughter will be getting something the 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 wife these people, the parents will be getting something. So these people shouldn't be part of the wasiyah, the will, the, the wish. Because they'll already be getting something anyway. Something beyond this. Something, so, some, some other organization, some other person, some person who was his close friend, who helped him in his life quite a lot, and who is not part of his family, who will not be getting a share from his wealth. Then you can say one third for him. That is another thing. So this is, now this is the hadith. The following hadith refers specifically to bequest. It is the duty of a Muslim who has anything to bequeath not to let two nights pass 
passed without including it in his will. So this is the hadith of Bukhari. The, now number four. The remaining assets after deducting debt, funeral expenses, and bequest, if applicable, are to be distributed according to the Quran in injection. The actual distribution depends entirely upon the number of surviving family members. Given the wide range of possible distribution, we would recommend consulting a scholar. We have, our, however, summarized below the Sharia position, which implies to a conventional family situation where the deceased was married with children. Now, they're giving you a few examples. If a husband, if the husband passes away, his parents, if surviving, if the parents are still alive, would each be entitled to one sixth of the value of the assets. So if a person dies, he's got father and a mother who are still alive. So both of the parents will get one sixth. Okay? So that's straightforward. His wife would receive one eighth, and the balance would be split amongst the children in a manner so the son will receive twice the share received by the daughter. Now this we have already done. Now the second second point, if the wife passes away first, the above distribution will be the same except the wife's parents stand to inherit one-sixth each and the husband would receive one-fourth of the asset, not one-eighth. So if the, die, the wife was to die first, then the husband will get quarter. And if the husband was to die first, and she has children, then she will get one eighth. Now they they have given you if on the other page they have given you a few examples. So inshallah, you can read this in your own time. Now legally, the next page, legal constitution. A will must be legally valid so that the court can enforce its stipulation upon death if enforcement is required. Given the Sharia is not recognized under English law, how does a British Muslim? ensure distribution upon death takes place according to Sharia principles. The simplest way to resolve this issue is to place assets under trust. So make a trust first. Whatever money you have, try to make like a little trust. But only after death has occurred, not prior to death. A trust is a distinct legal entity recognized under English law and is controlled by trustees on behalf of beneficiaries, which are usually the family members. Specific trustees can therefore be nominated within the will, and the will can also, be pl can also place upon the trustees the obligation of following Sharia principles. So, what will you do first? All your wealth, the house, car, whatever you have, put it all under the name of a trust. Make a trust. This is the trust of this family. For example, this is the trust of the you know, our family, Raja family, or this is the trust of the Patel family. Make it all under <coughs> a trust. So, and then make two trustees. So make your son, your brother, or whoever it is, or two of your sons, trustees. And then tell them in the, in the deed, trust deed, that uh, all this wealth after my death should be done Islamically distributed among the family members. So this is the easiest way. This is the legal way of doing. If this is not done, then uh, try to do it as soon as possible. It, uh, it's not a very complicated way of doing it. All you will have to do is uh, contact the um, uh, charity commission and make like a trust. The arrangement resolves the above dilemma as the trust is an entity easily enforced under English law. So this is easily. The responsibility of deciding how to apply Sharia conferred is conferred upon the trustees, not the courts. So now, that trust, how it should be used, the court will not have no say in it because that's a trust. And they have a trustee, so the trustees will be able to decide. <coughs> as long as the trustees are honest and competent, the will can thus be implemented according to Sharia in a legally enforced manner. So this is legally how it should be done. Now you can read the rest of it and they will give you a few examples on the next page. Inheritance tax and asset protection considerations. So this is if a person he has more than 325,000 
or if a person has a joint account with his wife, him and his wife, then they have double, 650,000. So they will get a 40% inheritance tax. So inheritance tax is payable at a rate of 40% on all assets, including the family home valued over the nil rate, nil rate band, NRB, nil rate band. The NRB for the tax year 2010-2011 is worth 325,000. If a person has 325,000, then he will be required to pay the inheritance tax. Both the husband and wife are entitled to their own nil rate band. Hence, for the married couple, inheritance tax is normally only an issue if the combined tax are valued over 650000 Assets transferred to a spouse on death are exempt from inheritance tax, irrespective of the amount transferred. Assets transferred to any other individual are only exempt up to the NRB threshold. For, wealth, for wealthy individuals, ensuring assets are inherited only by the rightful family members becomes a major concern. So those who are very wealthy, they have this amount of money. For them to do, um, according to the Sharia, rightful distribution on the heirs is a major concern. Invariably, the likelihood of argument and legal disputes increases when the deceased leaves behind substantial wealth. For those who in, with inheritance tax issues, there are many tax planning options available for which professional advice should be sought. In summary, for those individuals whose total assets are worth less than 325000 and who are also very confident the families will not require asset protection on death, a bare trust will suffice. A template for Islamic will is contained within. Yes, so they will give you. A, so they they give you examples of this as well. Now this is a will form. If you look on the next page, page number ten, after the page number ten, then there is a will form which we should fill in, and we can pull this out as well. It's just this this four four page form, which. So now they will give you how to fill in the form. Important guidelines to read before completing the free Islamic will template. <coughs> a template of a bare trust will, will can be found overleaf. By filling in the template, it is potentially possible for the legal and sharia issues to be fulfilled. It is vital to remember, however, that there is no substitute for taking professional advice as they are Many individual issues and scenarios which are template cannot accommodate. So this is just general template. They are saying that this is not a final. So you should still try to get it finalized with all your assets, with all your income, all your family and everything, with a local professional, with an accountant, with a solicitor or something, to get it finalized. Um, uh, and also in detail with a with a scholar who can uh, um, finalize every case has to be dealt individually that is why i always tell people that uh, we should have a specific department just to for ulama and professionals to help every individual to fill in a islamic will form individually but today unfortunately we don't have it um, uh, but inshallah, we are working towards it, and inshallah, very soon, um, uh, make dua that something like this takes place in our community. So this template is therefore provided for information purposes only and does not constitute advice. So it, this is like a template. So you can now somebody's circumstances may be a bit different. So some of the things in this template, maybe they'll have to add a few things. Maybe some things will not apply to them. But this is like a general template. This template is only suitable for. So now they're giving you who is this template suitable for? The owning assets in England or Wales, those owning assets in England or Wales who want an Islamic will valid under English law. So only for those who are living in England, England and Wales, not for those in Scotland. 
That's another country on its own. No, just for the people living in England and Wales. Those whose individual assets are valued at less than 325,000, or if they are married, then double 650,000. If it is more than 40%, inheritance tax will apply. Number three, those who expect their surviving family to amicably, amicably distribute their wealth upon their death. If any one of the above three conditions do not apply to you, please do not proceed with using this template and obtain professional legal or tax advice. So if you, have, if you are not living in England, you are living in another country, or if you have more than 325,000, or double if you have husband and wife and you have more than 650,000, then this, this form will not help you. You will have to look at it as an individual because then you will have to pay the 40% tax, which will require another advice. So this is basically what the form is. So for the time being, keep this form, fill it in, pull it out, get it signed, get it up to date, and if you get stuck anywhere, then inshallah please um, uh, contact me or contact anybody else. So the first thing is uh, you, you get in contact with Charity Commission. Charity Commission is uh, you submit the application <coughs> online, on the internet. So you go to charitycommission.gov.uk, whatever, and then uh, they will give you options. Um, apply for charity. Then you click that, then they will say as an association or as a trust. Then you click the trust part, then you fill in the form as we go along. And then they will ask for a few documents, and so then they will ask who are the trustees. So you can make minimum two trustees, maximum, no matter how many. So maybe you can take, you can make two of your sons trustees, or maybe all of them trustees, all of your children. So then you put everything on that name. So once the trust is established, it will take maybe one or two months, maximum, they take up to six weeks or something, uh, six to eight weeks. So once that is established, they've got all the documents, then uh, um, uh, put the house on that trust name. So if it is whatever family it is, this family trust. So put the house on the name, put the cars on the name, put everything, all the other wealth. So everything is all under one trust. So you have the total. It's easy to calculate everything. So anytime you die, and then you make sure that there is a um, uh, there is a uh, part of the trust deed. You you make sure you've written on it that this trust um, uh, should be distributed according to the Sharia after the death of such and such a person. So after as well that person dies, the trust will automatically the trustee will have to do whatever is written in the deed. So that's Islamically. It, it, it's not very difficult. Um, uh, uh, it's it's quite straightforward. It depends on what yeah, more like a s s small trust deed, as, as a family. Like, you have mustard trust, tr trust as a mustard, big organization. These are like big trust. You, you have Umar welfare trust, like big, these are big. This is more like a small one for family trust. Yeah. No, I think one person minimum should be two. Yeah. Is the trust for one full family or is it for individual in the family? Well, it could be the wealth of the individual, and then uh, whoever will be inheriting, they can become the trustee. Yeah. yeah. By the um, trust of the individual. So this would be like, yeah. Yeah, because it'll be like the trust of the individual itself. So, for example, if a person, husband and wife, they both have uh, less than 650,000, so if they both want to make a trust together, then um, uh, if they want to sell that house, then together they will sign the papers and everything, and according to the trust, they can sell it with the two trustees who they've been. And if they want to individually make two trusts, one on the wife's name, one on the husband's name, then that's up to them. So they... So it will be the trust of the individual itself, not the whole thing. 
So one of the sons wants to... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yes, so the rest of the heirs, the rest of the inheritors, then they should get together to give him his share off, and then he will be out of the share of the house. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and you can either. Yeah, because sometimes special conditions for special scenarios. Yeah. Look at mother and father, and four children. Yeah. So the father passes away, and one does one the son he wants his share. Yeah. So when they sell the house, how do they share? Yes, if if. Uh, all the other sons can <coughs> pay that person off, then that's fine. That yeah, that or that share. So <coughs> maybe a quarter of the house will belong to him or um, whatever so it is. Yeah. So what would happen? Yeah. Or if, if that, that son has got the ability financially to buy, um, uh, or Please. yeah, Please. yeah, um, the other the other people off or something, then that's up to him. But in the condition, if 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 the person is very arrogant, yeah. you know, something will happen like that, isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah. I want my care, what happens, I don't care. And the members don't have the money. Yeah. The only asset is the house, and the only way is by disposing the house. But if you sell the house, then they're going to be on the streets, aren't they? Yeah, so, 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 so you've got to be careful here. So f- when, when you make a will, right? When you make a will, you should go before first, then make sure you but that 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 should be the 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 education or the training given to the children that they should look after their mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not the same thing, whether or not he's, you know, every day, and yeah, cases like that. So, mm-hmm. when you go from there, for example, you know, if he's very arrogant, you know, I want my share, and you don't have that money, and you know, sell the house, but obviously by selling the house, you're going to be in the streets, aren't you? Or yeah, maybe... Not, you're not going to have sufficient money to buy another... Uh, maybe a smaller money. house or something, isn't it? Or, 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 is this, or, or is this, is it like what Osman just said, is it possible to put it under the yeah. condition? Under the condition? Until my wife is alive, nothing can be done with my wealth. They couldn't wait until no, no, die. no, no, that, no. That's not allowed because. Uh, that's what I meant to say. I don't know. No, you can, you can, you can put it that, uh, um, uh, for example, you can put something like this that, uh, after I die, each of my son will get, or each each of my children will get a share of this, whatever it is, my house. Um, uh, they are not allowed to get the wealth. Um, th- that could be okay until um, uh, my wife dies. That could be okay. Mm-hmm. So until until the death of the wife, she will have a share in the house. But once the wife dies, then then the house could be she he, he can get the money. Then that, th- that could be done. But uh, still, that house as soon as the person dies will will be belong to him. A, a part of it will still belong to him. He 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 won't have to wait until the wife dies. So he can either buy the other three parts off or he can either um, uh, tell the other brothers if uh, they are willing to that um, uh, okay the mother is still living here but uh, um, I want to buy another house so I need the money or something so if you can all get together and give me the money so you can only three of you own the house and I can sell you my share or something or can this be done before you're alive yeah but say you got four children yeah and then you want to, before you go from here, you say, then once I am dead, that's yours, or once I'm alive, or, or, or when I get to age 60, that's yours, that's yours, that's yours, that's yours, or you can have this and that. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, yeah, if, 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 you, if you are distributing it while you are alive, yeah. then you give everybody equal. Yeah, so if you have daughters, you have children, boys, you give everybody equal. Yeah. You, while you are alive, you can give everything away, no problem. That's also okay. Yeah, chaos and everything. Yeah. Big house when you die, he can share the 
your your wealth to do that. Yeah. Or sure. can you do this uh, to say my two sons? I want to give them or my two daughters. I say give them calculate myself, say uh, how much I've got yeah. and give my two daughters so much. Yeah. Right. And the rest leave it till I die and then they share it afterwards and they they're not allowed there or do that. I don't know. No, why is your life you should try to be equal in giving? Like when when uh, Sahabi he brought his son to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, O oh, Nabi of Allah, I have given this gift to my son. Or I have given this wealth or whatever to my son. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, have you given it to all your other children? She said, no, I've just given it to this son. She said, make sure you give it to all your children equally. Whatever you've given to this one, you give it to all your son or all your children. So why is we alive? We should give it to sons, daughters, everybody will get the equal. Suppose husband and wife got a house and, you know, like in, in this country, we, you have the title deed and the husband and wife, both their names are on the title deed. So in, in terms of the British law, the, the, the um, law here, you, the husband and wife got equal share in the house. Now, where does Islam start, you know, going to our so Islamic way, even though the husband maybe just bought the house initially, uh, paid for everything, but because the, both the names are in the title deed, uh, in terms of the law, the wife owns half the property and the husband owns the other half. Now, if either one of those persons die, you know, do we do we say that well, because the, both the names are on there, the wife owns half the house and the husband owns the, the other half, and you divide it that way, or do you say well, the husband, you know, is his house, even though the wife's name's on there? If uh, if they in the within the life they were accept they accepted each other, for example. If the husband accepted it, yeah, this house, half of it, is belong to my wife. Then uh, after he dies, only that half which belonged to him will be distributed. Oh, okay. The other half will still belong to the wife until she's alive. Because that, that, the reason I say that is sometimes, because I, mean, I know the way things happen in this country, you know, like Brother said here, that his kids might say, you want to you know, get the mother out and say, we'll sell the house, and they're, they're left with nothing. Hmm. If the husband and wife agree from the beginning, they look, you know, we both have equal share then it's less likely for the children to then yes. know, uh, to be able to sell the house and say, I want my share. The, the, the wife will still have half the share. And then if the husband dies, obviously the, the children can get the share and the wife will get the share from that. Yeah. His share. Yeah. So she has more, more percentage in the house, more power, more power in, the, in the... Yeah, because half will belong to her and only half will be distributed. Yeah, yeah that's, mm. that's okay. Obviously, you distribute... Come away, me. You distribute it when she dies. You know, like many example, half... The husband and half can go to the wife. And children want if they want to share of it of that then how do you do how how do you tackle that? Like for example, let's go back to the beginning. One house. Wife and husband they both have half half. Husband died. So now half of the house belongs to the wife. She's still alive. Yeah. So now the inheritance will only be distributed in half of the house. Right. So one eighth will go to the wife anyway. So the wife will own the half of the house plus one eighth. Yeah. And then the rest, the children, whatever. If and Now if she wants to buy that off of the children, she says to the children, look, half of the house plus one eighth belong to me. So I will pay, will calculate the value of the house. Mm-hmm. Half of it is already mine. One eighth of the other half is already mine. Yeah. So the next seven eighths, Let's calculate and I will pay all of you off. Then everything will belong to her. Then that's, that's fine, yeah? When you get married, you give your wife dowry uh, and gifts and that. And the, suppose the wife dies before the husband. So obviously then the husband gets a share from the wife, the, the quarter share. Does that include the jewelry and all that? Does that, left behind? Does that belong, you know, the dowry bit? Does that belong to her children? Or does the husband get a share from that as well? Now, whatever dowry, whatever you, you give to your wife, that all now... It belongs to your, the wife, yeah. belongs to the wife anyway. So now that's hers. So whenever she dies, now you don't look at it, oh, this was dowry, this was her belonging now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you forget, is, yeah. yeah, whatever, yeah. So it's her property that basically gets divided again. Yeah, yeah same, yeah. She's got. yeah. In this country, the most of the people, they're only people, they're quite old, and they get benefits from the government, right? And that benefit is supposed to be spent on them. At the same time, the children are quite rich. They don't need the money. The government gives the money to the, the person just to look after himself. Once he dies, that money is government's money. But he spends less. He tried to minimize his cost and show the government, yes, I am using it, but meanwhile he's not using it. If, 
you know, hiding everything from the government. Okay, for example, with a hundred thousand pounds when he died, what do you do with that money? Because the government gave it to him. Like benefits, he's yeah. Right? Yes, sir. He went to him. Yeah. It's supposed to be spent on him because of all this illness, all this, right? Yeah. He, he, he didn't spend it. Government doesn't know that he spent it or not. Yes, so whether he spent it or not, that that was given to him. So it belongs to his, it's part of his belonging. He, he has to spend it because he said he's got few illnesses, right? And because of his, his cow, he told them I've got five illnesses. Because of five illnesses, they give him 500 pounds a week. If he's got three illnesses, they told him, they'll give him three, 300. And because of he said, and say, yeah, all five illnesses, it cost him that much money, yeah. 500 pounds a week. Okay, we give him 500 pounds money. And he's not spending on his illnesses what is given, right? Yeah. Is that money should go into the Yeah, so whether he spends it or not, then that's his problem. No, but he, he, he spends one day he tried he, he tried to hide the lies to government. Then that lying is between him and Allah. Now say, yeah. that, so even the children know. Yeah. So what what circumstances come to that money? Then uh, if the children are worried about having pure wealth rather than those that wealth that was lied, then they can be honest and then they can... Um, what do you do with that money? If children say yes, okay, we don't need it and we know how this money comes to. What do you do? What should you do with that money? So, give it to one of the government trust, give it to the NHS trust or give it to um, uh, um, any other trust um, uh, which is working, which, uh, which was helping uh, anyway from before. Like, uh, there are many other trusts which are m working in hospital, NHS trust and other trusts. You can just give it back to them. If you, if, you want to, if you want to stay away from that wealth, if you think that is not pure wealth because you lied or whatever in achieving the wealth, then that's, I think, the best way to do it, that just give it back to NHS trust or something. Uh, uh, any person has any other question? Yeah, uh, going back yeah. to the solution. Yeah. In the first place, you, you already made the uh, reference to it in, in your talk. Uh, if a person uh, has distributed wealth before he, he dies, yeah? And uh, you, you said, well, I'm not going to give anything to him because it's not my son or it's not my daughter. But other, uh, on the other hand, you could say, well, that guy's well off. Yeah. Okay, he's nice to me, but he's very well off. So he doesn't need it. I'm going to leave my wealth to the other left. What happens in that situation? No, um. Uh he, according to you, what, what he said, he should distribute it yeah. equally, respecting what, what, what he's doing. Yeah. And if he hasn't done that, what is his situation? Then he will be punished for it because uh, now if that person from his own side said that, okay, my father has left so much and alhamdulillah I've got um, quite a bit of money, so I don't need it, then that's, that's okay. But if the father has said that he's rich, don't give anything to him, then that's wrong. No, no, if it's distributed before he dies. Okay. If it's distributed before he dies, right? Yeah. He's allocated the thing, yeah? And says, well, that guy is a need it, the other guy is a need it, so we need to leave him. Even though we're trying to do justice yeah. here. No, um, we should try to be equal. Whether, whether one of the sons is rich, whether one of the sons is poor, try to be equal. Now, now, now the son himself, if he's understanding, then he himself will say, okay, that brother is more in need, so I will give, I will take my share and give it to him. Yeah. Then that's different. But, but if he doesn't want to give, then that's... that's person has made a decision on his own, yeah. without consulting the other, other guy, you know, what would be his situation, how would he be, be accountable? Then, morally, or whilst living in this country, or whilst living in the community, once that son finds out, then there will be fight, then there will be arguments, that my father gave it to everybody, is he not regarding me as a son or something? Why didn't he give me? Then there will be, the, fa the family will break. So even as a unit in the family, this is not good. And Islamically as well, he will be asked about it that uh, this was also your son. Whatever he earned, that was his own earnings. Um, uh, whilst you were dividing, you should have divided equally. So you should, you should, whenever you're giving your children, you should uh, let others know, all the children know, that look, this is all my wealth, I've given this much to this brother, I've given this much to this brother, Alhamdulillah, you've got a bit of wealth, so is it okay for me that this much should be given to you, 
but this brother is more in need, shall I give that share if you're happy with it to this brother? If he says, yeah, okay, then that's... If he says, no, I want it, then you have to give it to him. Uh, Adopt a child. Adopt a child is... Uh, just like a stranger, he, he, he will not inherit from your wealth. Uh, adoption is not your blood son or blood child, so he will not inherit. You, okay, from the one third of will you can make that, okay, this was not my blood son, but... Uh, yeah, the, yeah. You can give it to him, but if you're still happy Yeah. What will you say? Is this entitled or not? No. Not at all? No. Just the question regarding the will to the list. Okay. Does it have to be written on paper or does it have to be verbal? No, paper, paper sh should be written. <coughs> because the hadith says maktub. The hadith says something written. So the words of the hadith is actually written, like maktub and inda. So you sh we should try to make sure it's written. Legally as well, you'd be better off just sitting down, otherwise you'd be asking for... Yeah, because <laughs> many things are said, but when it comes to actual, there's no documents, then things become difficult. So you should actually r get it written, and every now and then update it. Because circumstances change every few months, every few years, it changes. So not just make one form and say, oh, this is for the rest of my life. Update it every now and then. Update it. Now you've got one more son or you've got, you've bought one more house, or whatever, you know, you've got something, then every now and then you need to update it. We should always have one ready with you. Because any time you could die. We could say a lot of people, we, we forget our parents, you know, when we're doing our wills and now we say, I want my children to, but you don't, you don't remember that your parents, I mean, if they're alive, yeah. they have a right on a will, but I think in this country, a lot of people do make their wills. If you put down your will, you know, now, now, now this is the whole table which was printed uh, last year yeah, we printed it and it we, we printed I think about three four thousand copies and it's all out of stock now so we'll going to be printing it again inshallah but this and we're going to be making a few changes on it um, uh, f make it up to date a bit so I'm um, uh, it says here, if a person dies leaving um, a wife and children and also if parents, then how will it be distributed? It's all here. And we don't want to go into detail because it's quite complicated. It's quite a long, long uh, thing. So, um, But uh, it's all written here. So, um, do, do grandparents get anything? Grandchildren? No. no. Um, uh, only the immediate. So the son, not grandson. Uh, he can, they, they, they can make it inside that one third will that gives so much to my grandson. But as from the share itself, um, no, only the son and uh, father, parents, yeah. So if, if you have, say, brothers and sisters, uh, and your, your parents have left the will, and one of your brother or sister passes away, and in the will originally they said, oh, I want my, you know, my brother and sister to be distributed this way in the family way, but then one of the brother or sister passes away, do they miss out in the will then? Then that share so will, children, yeah, yeah, yeah. That share will be distributed according to his family now. So we we should try to do it as soon as possible because sometimes one of the person who 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 was meant to get a share he dies as well. Mm. Then he ends up. Now we will be questionable for that. That um, uh, why wasn't his share given on time? So this should be done as soon as possible. Um, within within maximum within three to four weeks, as soon as a person dies, everything should be out of the way. Because the more it is delayed, the more it, it gets difficult for the person in the grave as well. Because now the wealth doesn't belong to him, and uh, it has not even been distributed the way Allah wants it to be. So now he's, he's having problems in the grave. So as soon as he dies, maximum within three to four weeks, everything should be out of the way. Everybody should be given the... Is there any restriction on age? No, no, no age restriction. As sure the person is mature, um, uh, he should have a will ready with him. Okay, if uh, if a person dies and the, the children are small, you know, they're quite young, and they're only like five, ten years old, then you can say that, okay, the, these, um, this, this should be given to my children, but because they're small, then I have given this so-and-so, such a person, the responsibility to look after the wealth of my son. Once they mature, once they become 18, whatever, then 
if the wealth could be given to them, then that's okay. Well, all the shareholders, like, you know, whoever's going to get share from there, everyone agrees, every one of them. Okay, we don't want to tell anything now. Mm -hmm. We might get it 10 years down. In that case, they might get double price. Do our... Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. If all the people who will be inheriting are happy with it, and they all know what's happening, and how much they should be getting now, and how much they're expecting to get it 10 years later, then that's fine. No problem. Because if that situation can arise, say if you go elderly parents, and one of your parents passes, but if, and your left on yeah. own, you don't want to sell the house and the property, say, look, you know, my mother's living in the house, we want to, uh, as long as she's alive, let her stay there, you know, we know we're going to get a share in the property, and you don't touch that until they're, they're gone, sort of thing. Like you just said, if you, everybody knows what share they're going to get, if there's no uh, asab or, the, you know, gunah to the, the, the father, because obviously they're trying to help the mother out in a way by not selling the property. Yeah, but for example, now in that 10 years, you're going back to your question, if, if in that 10 years, one of those who had a share dies. Yeah, yeah. Do they still get a share though? That they should yeah, so now, now the children should be notified that, look, this is what was agreed, and now this much share was used to belong to your father. So do you want the share now, or do you want to wait until we've still got three, four years to go, and then we will be expecting so much? Then yeah, because the, the, one of the, yeah. As long as everything is transparent, everything is clarified to all the shareholders, all the inheritors, then it's fine. As long as nobody is left out of the question, everybody is, knows what's going on, everybody knows. Sometimes a, a person dies with the leaving a few shops behind. Now, um, uh, one of the sons or two of the sons want to buy the shop off. So first they should understand um, how much from the date the person died till the day the final papers were signed to get on the son's, the children's name, how much income was came. And that income should also be distributed among the shares. Because, because now that shop belongs to all the inheritance. But sometimes this doesn't happen. Sometimes uh, that income is just taken but they, they didn't become the owner of the shop from day one. You know, it took them to sign the papers and then pay the other inheritors off, maybe two, three months. So from the day the, f the person died till that day, all the income should also be that how much income daily, how much on a week, weekly basis, and that should also be distributed. It is very important thing. It is difficult thing as well. Difficult for everybody. Um, uh, if you um, ask the Hafid to read the ayat, <coughs> that's also he gets... It's difficult for him to read, and even uh, for the scholars to talk about these things is quite difficult because, uh, <coughs> and it, it it varies from individual to individual. Every person's circumstances may be different, so um, uh, we have to um, analyze every person according to his um, uh, thing. I'm not there is not a specific rule. This that this. This is the rule, but every person's circumstances may be different. So as soon as a person knows that, um, or if every person should should have, should go to a scholar every at least once every six months, or at least once in a year to get his um, uh, assets and his uh, will analyzed. That look, this is who I am. This is my wealth. These are my children. At least once in a year, go go and with a scholar, up to date his will. So he's up to date with everything. This is what every person should be doing, regardless of how old he is or how young he is. Doesn't, as long as he's mature, um, the hadith is clear that the, uh, a person should have the will form ready. And alhamdulillah, we have so many scholars around us that I'm sure nobody will uh, um, uh, say no. Alhamdulillah, everybody is willing to help, so we should uh, take, take advantage, you know of these uh, privileges, these, on, these um, say, g blessings that Allah has given us, of so many scholars around. Uh, be open. Look, this is my wealth. This is, these are the, how many houses I have. This is, and every year, update it, or every few months update it. Because circumstances, a person never knows when he's going to die. Just on a c road, car crash, everything's done. Now, if he doesn't have a will, state will come in. Now, maybe he may end up in Jahannam, may Allah save us because of not the wealth not being distributed after his death Islamically. So it's something to fear about. It's something very important 
which uh, we are not taking it seriously. And that is why um, uh, I, wherever I can, I always try to um, emphasize the point of making Islamic will wherever I can, even uh, not yesterday, last Juma when I was uh, um, just today, I come back from Barbados. Uh, last Friday, even in Barbados, in Juma, I, I also um, emphasized the point about Islamic will. And uh, nearly every scholar that was there, they all told me that until today, nobody has emphasized this point so much until uh, as much as you did. And uh, um, I said, um, this is something important. I said, I didn't say anything from my side. I only mentioned three, four hadith, the words of the Nabi of Allah. And uh, many people didn't even know that this is how important it was to make Islamic will. And 60, like I mentioned, 60 is the deadline. If by 60 you don't have Islamic will ready, then you better get it ready without any delay because by 70, 60 and 70, anytime, I'm not saying any, uh, any person, as soon as he's mature, he, he can die. So he should have it ready. But 60 is deadline. By 60, any person is 60 and he hasn't got it ready, he, sh he shouldn't even be sleeping at night without it, you know? <laughs> so, so that's about it, inshallah. Yeah? Yes, sir. Like I mentioned, the parents will get one six. And then and the rest of it will, um, if they don't have any, um, if they're not married or anything, they were still young or anything, then. The, the parents will get everything. Well, uh, uh, according to the normal rule, is the rest will go to Baitul Mal, but because today there's no Baitul Mal, then the parents will get everything. So. Okay. The father buys a house for the son. As he goes married, okay, I'll buy you the house. The house belongs to me. Now, his wife doesn't know. There's a condition made in the house. <coughs> and the, the husband died because of the house. Yeah, now... Nowadays, it's the biggest problem. Yeah. Father buys the house. The father doesn't tell his wife the house belongs to me. Just because they want sons to get married. Or daughters or Or daughters or something to get, just to get, get them married. They buy the house, but they don't tell them who the house belongs to. And once the husband dies, okay, the house is mine. No, that, that, that's why we should uh, get everything written clearly. That this house belongs to the father. He has just given it to the son to live in. Or if he has given it to the house, this, father, this house was bought by the father and he has gifted it to the son. Whatever it is. We should try to make it clear. Yeah, so, so it depends. If you have gifted it to him, then you can't take it back. No, just say, yeah. I'm just giving you. I'm not gifted, I'm just giving you. Yeah. Until you say, you know, the house is mine. Yeah, so then that's the like... Yeah. So that's like a borrowing. So you've let your son borrow, meaning li live in it. But it doesn't belong to him. But they don't tell the, his wife. Yeah, so that's why you should make it clear. Um, uh, so as soon as the wife comes into the family, you should, you, should, you should make them sit down and you should tell them, look, this is the house. I, it's my house. I bought it. I'm letting my son live in it. He's luring it. And this is the... Yeah, just, just make it clear. See, see that's, that, that's the weakness. Yeah. That's what the master saying. Everyone makes a will. The father, he's made his will. The son makes a will. And the, the daughter, like, she has a will as well. And she'll know this house is not him. Because they have to write it. As soon as she knows, she'll go. Guys, <laughs> again, Yes, yeah, so they lie, you see. Yes, that's lying. If you... Everybody's to blame, isn't it? Because both parties lie. Yeah. Now, 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 now you got the wife on the basis of lying. <laughs> and that's...
That's wrong as well. <laughs> no, just stay away from lying. Simple as that. Just be clear. That get to him, let finish. If you want your daughter to marry him, you marry. If you don't want to, then... Business transaction. Yeah. Well, that happens. Business transaction. Yeah. That's the biggest problem. Hmm. So I hope everybody... Well, I'm not, I'm not a... No, inshallah we'll be updating. We are getting it updated. Inshallah next month we'll be printing another few thousand copies. So make do inshallah. A um, lot of people are contacting. They want so many copies, so many copies. So I was looking at this earlier on. It says here back two to four hours of workshop. And just briefly or much of that to explain. But to, to know what detail that means, mm-hmm. someone put their own family in front of you. Because if I die myself, what will happen then? You need good time. Like Malana will tell you, the whole, this whole is a subject which we, is taught in the Dagul Ulum. And it's taught over the whole year. You know, two, two, three books. The whole year is taught. Now, for that to be um, compromised, you know, co- compressed into one or two hours is difficult. But we can do, try our best, uh, not trying to make everybody a master in this field, but just trying to give you the importance that this is also something very important that we need to... It's, um, it's an Islamic will calculator, I think it's IRTH is called. Um, it, again, you put all your details in, and it actually works out the percentage of it, because the Islamic will is a lot of percentages, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Work out. And it's, it's, it's on the internet if people want to uh, have a look. Yeah. Obviously, then get a check with an Ali, I'm not saying that go on with that, but uh, it's quite a good one, it's IRTH is called. Yeah, so you said the Islamic will calculator, R I T H. I R T H. I R T H. May Almighty Allah give all of us the ability to have our will for us. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa salli ala Muhammad wa ala Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa barik ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Muhammad wa ala Oh Allah, please forgive all our sins. Oh Allah, oh Allah, please forgive all our major sins. Oh Allah, please forgive all our minor sins. Oh Allah, oh Allah, give us the ability. To hold, uh, to uh, to have our will formed ready with us all the time. Oh Allah, oh Allah, give us the ability to Allah keep our will forms up to date. Oh Allah, oh Allah, all those that have uh, participated today. Oh Allah, oh Allah, please accept the participation. Oh Allah, oh Allah, give us the ability to understand these uh, Islamic inheritance laws. Oh Allah, give us the ability to practice them. Oh Allah, give us the ability to bring them into our homes. Oh Allah, oh Allah, unite the ummah. Oh Allah, unite the families. Oh Allah, oh Allah, unite our homes. O oh Allah, oh Allah, bring the teachings of the Qur'an and Sunnah into our homes. O oh Allah, oh Allah, give us the ability to spend life like the how the Nabi of Allah should spend his life. O oh Allah, oh Allah, give us the ability to spend our days how the Nabi of Allah should spend his days. O oh Allah, give us the ability to spend our nights how the Nabi of Allah should spend his nights. O oh Allah, all those who are ill, O oh Allah, please cure them. O oh Allah, any person in any type of difficulty, O oh Allah, please get rid of the difficulty. O oh Allah, any person in any type of debt, O oh Allah, please get rid of the debt. O oh Allah, please accept all our dua. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi l'akhirati hasana, wa fi l'adha manna. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta s-samir al-anim, wa tuba alayna innaka anta tawab al-rahim. Subhana rabbika rabbil aizati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala al-musalim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil aizati.